Good afternoon and welcome everybody to Yokogawa's press conference. We're thrilled that you could be here with us today. And as you're all well aware, the energy industry is going through a tremendous transition, so we're here to discuss Yokogawa's role in this area. We have two speakers today. Kurosan's going to talk about three sustainability goals in our overall optimization business. And Oscar's going to talk about our new visual Mesa multi-period optimization solution and the value that it brings to our customers. Kurosan. Thank you, Tom. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here again at this important event. It was a nice escape from uh, midwinter weather in Japan. I think it's safe to say that the energy industry overall has a healthy future. Our forecasts for primary energy consumption expect demand to continue to rise due to an increasing global population and expansion of the middle class in developing regions. At the same time, we are now at crossroad as to how we generate this energy. The International Energy Agency has developed three distinct scenarios based on relative CO2 emissions. And governments and industry are now under severe pressure to follow the sustainable development path. Because as a member of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, and in a report on new energy solutions released by the Council in December, it was clear that the longer we delayed the transition to low CO2 emissions and then zero emissions, the harder it will be to keep global warming within acceptable limits. Fortunately, forward thinking companies are making commitments to make the change happen, and we are here to support them. Yokoga set out its three goals for sustainability in 2017. These goals now form the basis for our long-term business framework, and we have set clear environmental economic KPI for them. And one of the key ways we will reach a target is through energy optimization of our business and our customers. Together, the power and industry sectors comprise 60% of energy-related CO2 emissions. All the renewables and ideal long-term replacement, what do we do about existing infrastructure, especially in developing regions where summer energy sources are relatively new? Within this report, the WBCSD noted that we can make significant headway in decarbonizing with existing technologies. And we agree with that. They also highlight the importance of energy efficiency in reducing emissions. Let's look at the final energy consumption by energy source of just industry. Industry is responsible for almost one third of final energy consumption demand, so improvement can have a huge impact. There are two main approaches to deliver energy optimization in process industries. The first one, is the optimization promotion of energy efficiency to reduce the overall demand for energy. And the other approach is how to economically optimize the supply side with low carbon energy sources. To do this requires both demand side and supply side optimization. So what can Yokoga and KBC do to deliver energy optimization? First, we have a broad range of energy-related technologies that enable us to combine value identification and value delivery in an integrated end-to-end -end solution. These technologies cover both the demand side of production and supply side or energy supply through plant utilities. And we're able to apply our solutions to energy, chemical, and other process industries. We already have a lot of success with energy optimization projects in Japan, and we're looking to build on the success globally. From our experience in an average facility, we are able to help customers to optimize their energy usage by more than 10% without any special capital investment required. To achieve this, 
we are now integrating KBC domain knowledge and Yokogawa's proven products, system, and services to dramatically expand our value proposition to customers in process industries. This covers many areas of operations. However, today we will just look at energy management and optimization. Working together with KBC, we are able to offer an integrated process that starts with our energy experts identifying opportunities for value creation through benchmarking. We then leverage our broad range of analysis technologies to drill down to a more detailed level and determine the optimal design of heat exchange systems, fire equipment, utilities, and the production process. During operations, we utilize Yokoa's best-in-class automation technology to ensure safe and stable operations. And then, KBC can provide ongoing support, both directly and through digital twins, to sustain and improve that value. Let's look at this from the point of view of the customer's operations. Here's a standard model that shows how the asset life cycle aspect and supply chain aspect intersect at production manufacturing. Yokogam is the best known for its product, systems, and solution in the operation management, process control, and optimization field. However, by integrating the technologies of Yokogam and KBC, we are now able to provide an end-to-end -end energy optimization solution that covers almost the entire asset life cycle and supply chain of process industries. We don't have time to throw through all these areas in detail today. Instead, we will introduce a new version of core technology in our solution, Visual Mesa Merge Period Optimizer, which is designed to meet the latest market needs of utilizing renewable energy and dealing with changes in demand. In 2017, we introduced synaptic business automation to represent the sustainable value you can deliver by co-creating with the customers and connecting everything in their businesses. We think this holistic energy optimization solution is a great example of how we are bringing this concept to life. I will now hand over to Oscar Santolani from KVC for the latest news on the Visual Mesa energy optimization technology. Oscar, please. So when the beer commercial of last night's Super Bowl tells you that their beer is manufactured with wind power, you know that energy transition is here, no? Hi, I'm Oscar Santolani. I'm with KBC. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with KBC, uh, we've been implementing, in my case, energy digital twins for the past 30 years. Um, they're installed pervasively through the major refineries and petrochemical companies around the world and they have been helping them reduce in the order of 2 to 5% their energy costs and their emissions, because you know that energy and emissions are two sides of the same coin. Today, as Cross mentioned, we're going to talk about what is the latest release of our multi-period optimizer and why that matters. So our decision support systems are here to help operators when they make their decisions in this cycle, based on the different time scale there, from months at the bottom, all the way now is here, months to seconds and seconds to months, at the different levels of granularity from automation through business management, our tools are designed so that the decision-making cycle is compressed and reduced in that way you can reduce the uncertainty and the, the margin leak that you suffer in the future. The whole idea of our digital twins is that it allows operators to compress that cycle and to have better forecasts of what is coming uh, for them with regards to uh, energy demand, energy prices, so they can make better decisions now. This is the core concept that is underneath all our digitalization transformation offerings. In the particular case of multi-period optimization, 
what we are introducing is the capability to do look ahead optimization. Based on forecasts of energy prices and energy demands, we are able to decide today what is the optimal operation now and the next days and weeks in order to reduce the emissions and the total energy cost. In order to do that, there's three elements that uh, uh, integrate that, which are the model itself, the digital twin representation of your energy assets, the forecasts of weather, of power pricing, of demand, and the optimization engine that allows to, uh, to bring not only the most economic solution, but that obeys the time constraints. So for example, if you have a piece of equipment that cannot be turned on uh, until a certain number of hours after it has been turned off have passed, that should be part of the model, and this is part of this technology. In this version, what we have added is we have started to enable our core technologies for the digitalization efforts. We have now added, it, here is the core product, we have now added interfaces with the cloud in addition to the ones that it already had with plant historians and ERPs in a, so that we can easily bring in forecasts of fuel prices, weather, electric market prices. The traditional data was the real-time plant data, the historical plant data, and from the ERPs, the production plans, the customer orders, and the equipment availability. Now, with all these inputs, we are more readily uh, um, have, uh, are able to provide to the operator a quicker and more complete understanding of which decisions he needs to make now in order to save as much of the uh, economic gap available to him. In this particular example, we're um, applying this uh, new technology as a proof of concept at one of our customers' site, which is a, a, a chilled water uh, manufacturing site for the Houston um, Medical District. This co-op uh, has to supply chilled water for the air conditioning of 20 hospital buildings uh, around, uh, around Houston. What they have is a series of chillers that can be steam turbine driven or electric motor driven, and they also have a thermal energy storage, which is a big thermos full of chilled water. Now, the goal of our digital twin is to be able to advise the operators what is the best operating conditions in order to minimize energy and emissions. In order to do that, we have to supply the system with forecasts, electricity pricing forecasts that in the case of Texas is given by the ERCOT organization, chilled water demand, that is a forecast that we do by harvesting the historical data of the hospitals, and other type of forecasts. So in this latest version, we have enabled our core technology with the web services and web interfaces necessary to automate that recollection of the forecasts, process them, and use analytics platforms in the cloud as well to process them. No? What ha this has allowed us to define and more precisely those forecasts of, for example, chilled water demand by making a tighter correlation. With increased confidence, operators can now make decisions sooner and more aggressive so they're faster, they're sooner, and they're more aggressive. Overall, they can reduce the maximum amount possible of emissions and reduction in energy costs. The answer of those type of digital twins is a schedule of when to deploy the different type of chillers and the thermal energy storage. Basically now, we have an integrated real-time optimizer which is our traditional technology, together with a forward-looking multi-period optimizer. And both together now can make operators as smart as possible with the right forecasts. We are first to market with this type of integrated solution. Summarizing, the purpose of our latest release is to ensure that users don't have to do data management and don't have to use Excel or as minimum as possible that we are within environmental regulation compliance, which has now been key to every single customer that we're working here in the States and abroad, and that we have a digital twin that allows them to capture as much of the economic uh, gap available and to reduce the operating cost and obviously the emissions. Thank you very much. Just one more thing, 
a bit of advertisement, but in booth number nine, we do have um, uh, this technology for you to, to check it out. Well, what is most? Sure, we have done elements of this before. How is this new release different? Mainly, it's all the web services and interfaces, such RESTful type of interfaces, to allow the proper interfacing to the forecasting systems to the analytics platform. It is enabling our core technology in the digitalization world. That is what is most different of it all. We also have added some automation engines internally to make sure that uh, in the future these forecasts are uh, retrained automatically so that the operator always has the latest prediction and reduces the uncertainty of, of what he's dealing with. What we're trying to do is to make it as seamless as possible for the operator, which is part of the digitalization efforts. I, I may want to say that not everything is core technology, no? Uh, or IT, let's say. One of the things that we're starting to use a lot is change of management consulting, because one of the keys of all these digitalization projects is that the people use it afterwards. No, if not, it, it's no good. And at KBC, there's a very strong component of change management of change, change management consulting. Hmm? So that is helping us a lot. We have uh, recently done a project in Japan in one of the major refiners where that digitalization effort uh, of consulting, change management consulting has been applied and we have seen not only additional uh, energy, uh, e energy reductions, but also sustainment over time because the two main challenges of our customers are systems like these fall in disuse and there's a skills gap in the, in the personnel that are using them. So don't always think about digitalization as just IT digital twins. Think about that, that's necessary. All the enablers are, have to be there, but also the component of uh, change management consulting. Is that okay? Any other? Yes, sir. So why don't we do it closed loop? Right. Correct. So uh, our experience with closed loop uh, is, is quite vast, but up to now it has been mainly with continuous uh, variables. So not, not all of these uh, decisions are continuous. Some are discrete, like start, stop, and, and those still have to have this component of operator. So we do have several closed loop optimization, uh, real-time optimizations in place, not in this example of the chilled water. Hmm? Those that we are not able to handle are discrete. I would envision that maybe only a subset of variables could be put in closed loop here, mm -hmm. and the rest would still have to be manual. No? Is that because the models need more refinement or more, more experience or something? Really it, it, it probably is the, tr I agree. It could be the trust of the model to, to yes, yes, probably in the future you're right, it could be, no? Mm -hmm. But, but nowadays, the, the state of art, our state of the art at least, is continuous variables we do put in closed loop, and we have examples, several, and discrete variables is still, the last yard is the operator there. That. I'm not arguing that the machines take over the way. <laughs> Any other question? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>